everyone. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. It's a fresh start throughout the league here in week one as these two teams have high hopes for the season ahead. It's the Bears going up against the Texans. With that, let's get on over to Houston as we're proud to introduce our new broadcast team for 2016, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Good luck, fellas. Larry, it is set to host Super Bowl 51 on February 5th of next year as you take a look inside NRG Stadium here in Houston. Today, the opener of the 2016 NFL season between the Chicago Bears and the Houston Texans. It's the dawn of a new era for us at EA Sports as the 2016 NFL season is underway. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll wind up about four yards shy of where he would have been if he had taken a knee as they'll start at the 21-yard line. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Looking for Cruz, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the former first-round pick, Kevin Johnson. And his guys are going to get the football at the 37-yard line. Well, it's his first career game, and now he has thrown his first career interception. So let's face it, that's very simply... His welcome to the NFL moment, isn't it? Get it out of the way, right? Get it out of the way, and he hopes it'll be the last for this game and not too many in his career. Completing it to the right side, Johnson. That one goes for 24 yards. So the offense has it first and 10. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they can do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but they have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks. Those guys are worth their weight in gold. So the pickup there for Lamar Miller, and he actually shredded his current team last year when he played against him, 175 yards, another 61 in the air, and two touchdowns. I guess that's a classic example of if you can't stop him, go get him, put him on your team. Lamar Miller, a big-time pickup for the Texans. Offensive starters here. Wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins, a talented, talented wide receiver. And he's still looking for that ultimate recognition. He wants to be mentioned with the best receivers in the game. His numbers suggest that we should do so. He needed three. He got two. Now that'll set up an interesting situation here on fourth and a yard. So on fourth down, the Texans will call on their field goal unit. And on comes Nick Novak from the right hash. And this one just a chippy. And Novak's kick is good. And it's now 3-0 Texans. So the folks here in the stands this afternoon, they're happy about that when their guys get the early advantage after the opening drive field goal. And they should be happy. Their guys look good getting down the field, and that's got to give them hope that good things are in store here today. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. They'll come out in the pistol. They'll run the... And oh, right away, he lost the football. As you and I both know, one reason team script plays to start a game is so they can practice them ahead of time. I will guarantee you, that fumble was not in the script. You don't think they had fumble written next to play one? There? No, that was never in the script because they want to have good memories when they go into a ball game, not something that could have gone wrong. Will Fuller was the intended target. That'll bring up second down. The starting 11 defensively for the Bears. Pernell McPhee is a strong run-stuffing outside linebacker who's beginning to blossom as a pass rusher. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. That is caught inside the five. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. Well, they've been practicing goal line offense all week. Let's see if they're able to capitalize here. They'll try to punch it in with Miller. And he's 
in for the score. Touchdown, Texans. Lamar Miller, his first touchdown as a Houston Texan. And the Texans will extend their lead. It's up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 10-zip. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And the decision to bring it out is going to cost him about seven yards, all told, as he's taken down back shy of the 20. It's a five-receiver set. Three to the left, two to the right. He'll come out throwing here on first down. On the grab, it's Reuben Randall. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. They're going to run this with a tight end. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. They'll look to throw here. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. Kendall Wright, the intended target. And now it's third down. And a look now at the defense for Houston. Kevin Johnson's skills just continue to get better and better. An elite athlete out on the corner, he's up to the challenge of any receiver. And the Texans have an extra defender in the secondary right, now on third down. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Flush to his right. Now he'll let it go deep left sideline. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Well, they went for the big play there, but that drop could really hurt their momentum. So on fourth down, on is the punter, Pat O'Donnell, to kick it away. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. That'll be out of bounds, and how good was that? They'll say the three-yard line. That's where they spot it. Now the Texans' offense, they head back out to do battle here. And they were able to punch it in the end zone last time. They'll be looking to do that again here for the defense. So obviously, they'll be looking to stop them from punching it back in the end zone. It always is punch-counterpunch, isn't it? And which team has the advantage? Well, let's just go back. Last time on offense, they rolled downfield, got into a good rhythm. You can see a little more bounce in and out of the huddle. You can see the sideline really get into the game. So defensively, you're thinking to yourself, how do we take that away from them? How do we get the advantage back? Let's see what they come up with. I think... It got his man complete! The 30! Touchdown, Houston! Will Fuller, his first NFL reception, goes for six. And the Texans will add on to their lead. And the man out of Notre Dame, Fuller, with that first trip into the end zone. When I watch him play, I think instead of calling signals and finishing with Hut Hut to start a play, for him, they had to fire a starter's pistol because he is just like a track guy exploding off the line of scrimmage. And while we're getting used to these big body receivers coming into the league, Will Fuller is not that, but he is so dynamic, so skilled, you have to find a way to get him the ball. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. 23 yards on the play. We heard them talk before the game about utilizing the intermediate passing game this week. It works for them there. They move the chains. And we saw them work on it in practice as well. And most teams take a period at a time to work on different things. They put a couple of periods of work into the intermediate passing game. And now we know exactly why. They got the look that they were seeking, and they were able to take advantage of it. It's a gain of 14 there. And it'll be first down, Bears. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. 
Maybe just a lack of concentration there as he couldn't haul it in. And when you're going across the middle like that, you know, he's running that drag route, you are conscious of all the bodies and the traffic in there. But let's face it, if you're going there, you might as well come down with the football and absorb whatever else happens after that. Cruz has it over the middle. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. And the next snap coming inside the red zone here. Now that play will end up on the highlights, and you'll see it all over the place. But what you won't see, the offensive line that bought the extra time, it'll lap. And that is caught. Touchdown, Bears. Zach Miller from six yards away. And the Bears get a bit closer. So he scrambled right, but was able to look back toward the middle of the end zone to find the target. As you know, in this game, sometimes you just have to know when to break the rules because we all know most guys throwing the football are taught never throw back into the middle of the field on a scramble. He did it and got away with it for a touchdown. Instinct sometimes, right? They just take over. Instinct and vision. Sometimes you just see people who are open, you're able to get it to them. That'll be taken in the end zone. And this will be a touchback, so a first chance here in week one to see the ball be brought out with the new rule to the 25-yard line. And now out comes Houston. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go-around. Second down to the offense in search of six yards. No, 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 no. Check. Right, here, here. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll slip his way up across the 30 to the 32. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? Let's see if they can convert here on third and three. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. And he's got the completion to Hopkins. And he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and it's Texans football as we get going in quarter number two. And they've got it here with a first down. to throw Hopkins on the grab over the middle and he takes this one down all the way near the 30 a great job pulling that one in from a guy as we know who can really blaze he's got a lot of speed and that speed can work for him so many different ways sometimes he just takes off and goes and just runs past people sometimes you get people to back off so far that you can catch everything underneath but still at some point in the game and he'll take this one in for a Texans touchdown. DeAndre Hopkins, 31 yards. And the Texans will extend their lead. Well, you know he can be explosive, and he's ultra-explosive there on the fly route. And you know how many times we've talked to coaches and we've had quoted back to us, well, you know something? When you execute really well, it doesn't matter if they know it's coming or not. Well, sometimes athleticism beats you as well. He just took off and went. And that's almost like one of your turkey bowl games, isn't it? Just go long, <laughs> man. Yard. I'll hit you. And it worked really well for them. It's Marcus Wheaton now to return it. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. The Bears' offense now gets set to head back onto the field. Last time they were out, they scored. Still trailing here, though, so some work to do. But it's okay in terms of mindset. Because they scored the last time, they're not quite as worried about being down on the scoreboard because now their confidence is a little bit higher. They feel like they've got something going, and they feel like they can attack again and put more points on the board. Are you scoreboard watching if you're the offense, or are you just focused on this drive? It, it, we wouldn't be telling the truth if we said that they didn't scoreboard watch. Everyone does it to some extent. But you've got to set it aside right now and just focus on this series. That'll take care of the scoreboard if they punch it into the end zone. They'll set up to throw. Trying for right, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Will Hill. And he returns it into enemy territory down to the 45-yard line. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? 
I would think that they would because if they were competent enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. Second down here after the incomplete pass. They'll come out in the pistol. Back to throw now on second and ten. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. And now with that completion, he's north of 200 yards here in the first half. And he's going to break our statistician, Marvin, isn't he? Because Marvin right now is just tallying it up. Hope his hand doesn't hurt too much doing this or keeps hitting the calculator. But my goodness, what a start he is off to. By the end of this game, he could have monster numbers. He just wants to continue to be accurate. All right, watch now, Barney, Barney. On second down, here's Miller. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. Not too many more ideal situations at second and two in order to try and pick up a first down. They ran it and picked it up. They'll look to throw now on first down. Forced out to his left. And he's just going to throw this one out of bounds here. Nowhere to go with it. Incomplete. My good friend, I'm just going to pose the question to you. Did that look like a pass that he should have thrown? Now, the rookie probably needs to be a little bit more careful in these situations. Yeah, that throw will turn him into a veteran quicker, but not in the way that he wants. He wants to learn his lessons by making good throws, not throws like that. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. Caught left side, Hopkins. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. And the play clock's running down. Out of the gun now on third down. Finding time. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. You never want to give up a sack. From the O-line's perspective, they hate it for several reasons, especially because they felt like they let little brother down back there in the pocket. Oh, no doubt. They have a ton of pride, and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no dirt, nothing on it, but it's really, really difficult. You're talking about some terrific athletes who are trying to put him on the ground. And the 10-year vet knocks it through the goalpost, and that will push this lead up to 20 now. So two first-half field goals now for a guy who, and you hate to give him the tag, a journeyman, but it's fair to say, Charles, he's been around in his career. Yeah, it's more half-leg will travel for him. He is a guy that's bounced around a bit, but he can still stroke him when called upon, just as he did right there. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. Picked off by Brandon Flowers. And his guys are going to get the football at the 37-yard line. Heading out is the Texans offense as they get set to take over here. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. And second and ten, he'll look to throw again. Completing it to the right side, Johnson. And he's in. Touchdown, Houston. Stevie Johnson, 37 yards. And the Texans will add on to their lead. As a fan, is there anything prettier than a well-executed post route? No, it's a thing of beauty, especially when it's done like that for a touchdown. Uh, the throw, the catch, and how about the run after to get it to the end zone?
The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This will be taken short. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. The Bears' offense now getting ready to take over. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play calling because a one-play drive where you throw an interception, a lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action? I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, get a little confidence in him, and let him fling another one. Looking left sideline, incomplete. Cameron Meredith, the intended target. And now it's second down. a play fake as they set up to throw and this one is incomplete Defense has set themselves up nicely. Third and ten now. They'll put two receivers left, two to the right. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. And he's going to go down. The Texans come at him and able to bring him to the ground. Here's Pat O'Donnell now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Here's Pat O'Donnell now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away. And boy, it's another boomer. This is taken at the 23. 12 yards on the return that time. And the Texans take possession. And now out comes Houston. And they will simply, Charles, be looking to duplicate what they did last drive when they were able to push it in for six. And they hope it'll be that easy, right? To be able to take exactly what happened before, replicate it. They may have to make a few additional changes along the way because I'm sure the defense will make some adjustments, but they've got to have great confidence having scored the last time out. Possible run anticipation here as the D-line sandwiches together. They'll start out on the ground. It's Lamar Miller. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down. You're set up very well for the rest of the drive. tight end carry and he will be brought down at about the 43 that time give him four on the carry and it'll make this a third and about two everyone's looking for the big runs the explosive runs the 20 to 30 yard plays but anytime you're picking up good yardage and setting yourself up on down and distance offenses love that too they'll run for it here this is Prosh the fullback and they pick up the first down there with a gain of four. Football's such a game of tendencies down and distance, and on third and inches, third and one, you think you may have fullback's probably going to get the ball, but when you get to third and two, most of the time that's either the running back or a pass play. So that's a nice tendency breaker by the offensive team there. Hand it to their big guy to pick up a first down. 
So we've reached halftime here on opening weekend as we send you now to Orlando and our Tiburon Studios where Larry Ridley's standing by with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? So both teams have their marching orders and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now out comes Houston. They come out here in the eye. Second half begins with a run from Miller. Oh, he's got some breathing room. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. They'll need to get the playoff quickly. They keep it with Miller on first down. And he'll take this one across the 45 up to about the 46-yard line. A gain of three, second down. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Hurry up, here we go. Tenth carry now for Lamar Miller. Room here to run. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. And the tackle's made there by one of the secondary members. And I can guarantee you, having played that spot in the huddle right now or on the field, they're urging for a little bit more support from the guys up front. I actually remember one game where I hopped over a defensive lineman to make a tackle downfield and realized he was 10 yards downfield. That's not good. That's being driven off the line of scrimmage, and you can't have that if you're going to win a game on defense. And he's going to get this inside the 30. 11 yards on the pickup, and that'll be good for a Houston first. Well, they're certainly running the ball pretty well on this drive, and all I remember as a secondary guy was if you're making a lot of tackles in a game, that's usually not good for your defense. You've got to figure out how to keep things in front of you because you know there's three levels, defensive line, linebackers, and into the secondary. And if the third level is leading your team in tackles, as a general rule, things aren't going so well for your defense. Now a run. This is Alfred Blue. He'll get it to the 23-yard line. Seven yards on the carry. Make it third and four coming up. But you got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. On third down, Miller. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. He loses four, and it brings up four. Yeah, let me puff out my chest a little bit, even though I'm not rooting for either team. That was a really nice defensive play. It's awfully fun to watch, even in an offensive game. And Novak's kick is good. And they're sitting pretty now as the lead grows even further. So three field goals for him here, and this last one helps him stretch out the lead. And he's been solid as usual. And this is what you need to do. Make sure you get points out of every possession. And so far, they've done a nice job of that. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. A look at the offense now here, coming back out on the road for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned, because some teams script to start a half, 
Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. Second down following the run. Boy, and now they can't even get a playoff. Over, 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 over. This is Howard on second down. And he's able to get out to the 32 brought down there. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. They'll run it now out of the gun. And some room to run now. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Ten yards on the pickup there, and the Bears are going to get a first. now here on EA Sports. It's Bears football, but they trail on the scoreboard as we get set to bring you the fourth quarter. Now the offense lining up first and ten. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get this up past the 45 to the 47. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. And he stopped immediately there. It'll only be a gain of a yard, and it sets up a third down and four now. Well, I think we know by now that every run is not going to be broken and get all the way to the end zone. But these short ones still have their value. You can still set up your play action and throw the football. You control the clock because you have the ball and they don't. And often the physicality sets the tempo for the game. On third down, this is Howard. Shrugs the tackle. Nice. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 41. Call that a loss of seven to bring up fourth. Well, that wasn't just a loss. That was a loss of big yardage there. So the sense you're starting to get is that offensively, things are starting to pile up against them, and they've got to find a way to stop that. Conversely, how about the great call by the defensive coordinator? He realized that he's got them on the run a little bit. That call was made to get upfield penetration by his defensive front to try and get into the gaps, get upfield into the backfield, and make a big play. I think that was actually called, not so much just to, you know, to get it done that way, but to say, hey, guess what? We're going to be aggressive, and we had an opportunity and seized it. They begin with a run by Miller. So he got free of one tackle but couldn't do a whole lot else. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. We always like to talk about defense in terms of levels. First level defensive line, second level linebackers, third level defensive backs. On that run, that was what we call a first level run, and it was stopped by a second level player. Call it a gain of a yard, and it's going to bring up third and five. Tough day, tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. He'll look to throw, and he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. The pro bowler DeAndre Hopkins, the intended receiver, and it's fourth down. Third down is the down. Both sides know they absolutely have to win, and the name of the game for the defense is pressure on the quarterback. But pressure on the quarterback with contact, that's how you end up winning it. Fielded at the 20. 
<laughs> now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. Huh, hate to see this. Week one of the season. We'll be back. Again, we'll see the pistol here. Here we go now. They'll begin the drive with Howard. And some space here. And a pretty little juke move there on a nice game. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. Another pistol look here. Again, it's Howard. And this defense continues to give them fits. They just can't get really anything going on the ground, can they? I love the theme that you just brought up. This defense has been tough all game long against the run. We just saw another example of it there. Time for a break. This one all over but the shouting. We'll finish it after this. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. They'll put two receivers left, two to the right. First down, they run with Howard. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. <laughs> They'll run from the pistol with Howard. And they will stop him after a fairly minimal pickup. Four yards on the pickup there, and now they're left with a third and eight. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. He lost two, and it brings up four. When you're putting together a formula for winning defense, it's exactly what we're seeing in this game. Controlling the line of scrimmage, attacking, and changing everything so that now they're playing in the offense's backfield. They're playing an excellent game. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. One final shot. They'll look to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And this is going to be caught. So it affects the final score, not the outcome, but it is a late touchdown here on the game's final play. Well, it was fourth down, so there was pressure to begin with, and then you make a one-handed catch like that. What a play. Just when you thought your blood pressure couldn't get any higher after having called for it on fourth down, you see a one-handed catch being attempted. I'm sure it spiked at that point for all the guys on that side of the field. And instead, they get a chance to celebrate. What a tremendous catch, bringing it down for the touchdown. And he'll bang that one through. Well, on the one side, if you try to take away something positive from this game, they played to the final whistle, getting the touchdown.